welcome to the video talking about discontinuities. Before I get into what a discontinuity actually is, I just want to talk about rational functions for a moment. So notice, I've given you a, a rational function, f of x. And the reason that this is a rational function is because it is written as a fraction. The only thing I have to make a note of here is that g of x and h of x are both polynomial functions. Okay. So now, if you have a function which is really the quotient of two functions, some weird things can happen. And it all starts with this denominator right here. So what happens if h of x is 0? Well, we know that we cannot divide by 0, so we're going to actually have some gaps in our graph. And that's what leads us to discontinuities. So I'm going to say here, discontinuities occur when h of x is 0. Or in other words, the denominator of the rational function is 0. And a discontinuity is really a, I'm going to call it a, a gap in the domain. So if there's a, a value that you want to evaluate and you actually get something that's undefined, well, that means that you have a gap in your domain at that value. So let's take a look at some examples of discontinuities. So we want to pause here and write this down and then restart. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep going. So we have two different types of discontinuities. In class, you actually saw the first type, which is a vertical asymptote. So I'm giving you an example here of why you have a vertical asymptote. So here's our function f of x. Notice our numerator is a polynomial. Our denominator is a polynomial. So we have a rational function. So what we care about when we're looking at discontinuities is what makes the denominator 0. So when will x minus 1 times x plus 2 equal 0. Well, we should know the values of 1 and negative 2 make that happen. Now notice that is a little different than the example to the right. The example to the right actually can simplify before we look at the denominator. Okay, So there's a little, little foreshadowing of what's to come. So notice what happens if I substitute 1 into f of x. I would get something like 2 over 0, right? 2 over 0, which is undefined. But if I actually substituted in values that were close to 1, like 0.9, and I'm just going to use my calculator to evaluate that, I get negative 6.552. And then if I went with uh, 0.91, now I'm at negative 7.293. Right? You can kind of see that you're going to approach negative infinity. And then if I went on the other side of 1, like 1.1, oh, look at that. I get a positive 6.77. 0, 0,9, oh, there's 7.515, and you'll notice that's approaching positive infinity. So if I look at the left side of 1, I approach negative infinity, and if I look at the right side, I'm approaching infinity. There's a good argument of why I have a vertical asymptote at 1. Right? So we have two vertical asymptotes on this example. Now it's time to take a look at the other example I provided. So remember when I said that this can actually be simplified before we look at the denom denominator? I also wanted to point out that I factored both of these examples for you. But you always should look at something in factored form. So now that it's in factored form, we'll see that x minus 2 and x minus 2 are, are in the numerator and denominator. So really, those undo each other. Right? Multiplying by x minus 2, dividing by x minus 2. So I'm left with g of x equals x minus 3. Look at that. The denominator completely disappeared. So now you're thinking, oh, no discontinuities. Ah, but there actually is a discontinuity. g of x is now a linear function. 
right? So we'd get a line. And the y-intercept is at negative 3. And it has a slope of 1. Looks something like this. But discontinuities happen in the original part of the function. Look at the original part. It had x minus 2 in the denominator. x minus 2 is still not allowed to equal 0. Well, what does make it equal 0? Well, x equals 2. That means that x is not allowed to be 2. I am not allowed to evaluate g of 2. So if it's not a vertical asymptote, we have a hole. So here's how we're going to find where the hole is. We know that the x value is 2. We are going to substitute 2 into our simplified function. So 2 minus 3 gets us negative 1. So there is a hole at 2 comma negative 1. Well, that's exactly a point that the line was going through in the first place. Right? But remember, you still have to look at those discontinuities in its unsimplified form. You could graph it in its simplified form. It's much easier to graph that line. But then I would have to remove that hole. So here's our examples with vertical asymptotes and holes. So remember, in the next video, we're going to take a look at some other issues that rational functions can cause. But as of right now, there are only two types of discontinuities that we've discussed, and those are vertical asymptotes and holes.